Michael, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, hello. Uh, all right. Our second uh, speaker is uh, Michael Gulland, and he's gonna uh, from Princeton University, and he's gonna tell us about a threshold result for monitored random quantum circuits. Michael, please go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you. Thanks, thanks for the organizers for inviting me. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, right, so uh, yeah, I'm Michael. I'm I'm at Princeton right now. I'm going to be moving to uh, NIST, National Institute of Standards and Technology, and QUICS, which is a quantum information center in Maryland. Okay, so the can you see my. Enter. I guess can you see this this pointer? Yeah, yeah, we do see the pointer. Is there anything blocking the screen or? Oh uh, no, looking great. Okay, thanks. Right, so the, the sort of two main references for this talk are are shown here. This is work with uh, David Hughes. We've we've been working pretty closely together on this topic. Uh, this this paper is, these are both preprints. This one's going to appear in his red letters soon. Um, some of the other references for this work and also collaborations with others are, are, are sort of reported in these papers. And there's a work in preparation which has had a big influence on the talk today. Um, and then there's also a collaboration with an experimental group, Chris Monroe um, at JQI, and I'll try and show, as I mentioned in the abstract, I'll try and show some, some data from that collaboration. Okay, so the, the, the general motivation for this topic and why we got interested in this problem is to really think about um, monitored non-equilibrium uh, quantum mini-body systems. So the, the idea is that, you know, many of us believe that if, you, if we wanna have sort of sustained sort of long time um, memories, transmissions, or processings of quantum information will be some kind of non-equilibrium process that involves measuring a mini-body system and then applying some sort of feedback to or error correction to the system. Okay, so the, the general sort of uh, physical systems that I, that I think about quite a bit and which are illustrated schematically here are shown in this diagram. So we, we think of you know, we have a many-body quantum system that has some internal Hamiltonian, but it's, it's an open system, so it's also coupled to an environment. And that environment has, you know, parts of it that are uncontrolled, which lead to dissipation, but then there are also parts of it which are well-controlled um, and which we characterize in terms of, you know, access to driving in the system, measurements of the system, and ultimately some kind of uh, feedback. And so today we're really going to focus on this measurement aspect and, and one way to think about a, a, a sort of monitored or a measured quantum system is to use these notions of, of quantum trajectories. So you have, a, you have some input density matrix, that's your input state, and you have an output state, but in addition to the output state, you have classical data associated with the measurement record, and that, that's called the quantum trajectory, and it goes back to this, you know, these very nice works um, in atomic physics. Okay, so just, just the discussion on the previous slide was a bit abstract, just to give you sort of concrete sense for what a quantum trajectory looks like in an experiment. So this is, this is a recent example of a quantum trajectory from, uh, from the, a group at Yale, Michelle Deveray, as at a lab. And so here, what they have is, is a, this is a three-level system. It's formed from two transvons qubits. So it's a three-level system with a, a ground state, a sort of a dark a excited state which emits photon, microwave photons very slowly, and then a bright state which rapidly emits microwave photons. And these, these photons are all recorded by some you know, microwave photon detector. Um, and so when you, when, you, when you keep track of that, that measurement data, then the type of quantum dynamics you get is, is illustrated here. So this is, this is the this is the recorded photo detectors, you know, the, on the, the microwave uh, counter. And you can see that, you know, over time, you see a quantum system and it's moving in between different, different internal states. So it has this very rich dynamics 
in both sort of space, which is the internal degrees of freedom in the system, and also time. So it's sort of a one uh, has an extra dimension, which is which is time. So okay, so that's that's just a concrete example. Um, so what what we're interested in today is this notion sort of of fault tolerance. So you have this this monitored systems, and we want to take a scaling limit. So we want to look at a large system and, and long times. And what's been found, you know, going back to this work in quantum information, is that such systems have so, sort of phase transitions between uh, the success and failure of quantum information storage, transmission, or, or processing. So typically we think of there's an, there's an error rate in the system, and there's something we call threshold, and below threshold, you know, we have success in the, in the, in the tasks. Um, so the, the, the sort of loosest definition of success is that, some, is that you know, there's some parameters of the system where the output density matrix contains some quantum information about the input density matrix. So quantum information has been remembered and, and processed. And then failure is when, you know, even given the measurement record, there's sort of no quantum information about the input state. So the, 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 what I want to talk about today is sort of the simpler physical models that exhibit such a phase transition. And, and Cigar, um, are already introduced this topic, and, and, there's, and I think many in the audience are also thinking about related problems, so I, I don't need to say too much about it, but, but the, right, the idea is that, is that this, this is sort of a simpler class of models, and it's, and it's structured in this way, so we have a, it was introduced by Lee, Lee Chen and Fisher and studied by many, many others. Um, some of the other works in the literature that take a similar sort of what they call coding perspective on this and this class of models are, are listed here. Um, so there's work by Choi, Bauchi, and Altman, and then also uh, from, from Harvard and, and, and uh, U, UC San Diego. Um, okay, so, right, so we have a similar setup as I described in the beginning. So we have an input state and output state with intermediate measurements, but uh, it's a sort of random unitary dynamics, and the measurements are simple. They're just each, each, um, point in space, we measure that site with, you know, with probability P in the Z basis. So the measurement record is a, is a bit string of, of this type. And you know, what's interesting is that this very simple model with very little structure, it shows the, the threshold, it shows the phase transition between success when you have you know, very few measurements in the system and then the sort of failure when there's, when there's many measurements. Um, let us see how on time, I'll, I'll try to not go too far over here. Um, okay, so so let me just c connect back to that diagram at the beginning. So this is a the system as we have you know the input state, the output state. So our our environment is going to be these measurements at rate p. So they they serve as both uh, they serve sort of as a local error model, but 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 we also are given access to the measurement record, which which makes the model somewhat uh, somewhat special. Okay, so then um, this, these, these models have, these, have this phase transition. There's two sharply distinct phases in this limit of you know, large systems and also long times. Um, and so, so above the critical measurement rate, you have this failure phase where there's, there's too much, the, the measurements are like errors, they collapse quantum information about the input state. So you no longer remember uh, quantum information. Uh, for, you know, below this critical measurement rate, there's this sort of success phase where the entangling dynamics of the circuit is able to essentially encode quantum information in a way that protects it from the, the future measurements. Um, so that's, that's sort of the qualitative picture. Uh, so some, some of the other observables for this transition, this was, you know, how this was first uh, discovered is by looking at um, entanglement. So you, so it's, so one way to quantify the transition is by looking at an entanglement of a pure state. Um, and then the transition is from, you know, a short range entangled state to a, to a long range or volume law entangled state. And there's this, there's this critical point in between where it, where it has this logarithmic scaling. Um, and this, this picture of the entanglement transition was, was given a geometric interpretation in terms of a sort of percolation problem in this tensor network where you think of making measurements as cutting bonds and the as cutting bonds in the in the network and then there's a percolation transition at too large a measurement rate. 
that's more of a qualitative picture, but I think it's, it's been helpful for conceptualizing the problem. Okay, so that, that so the other observable you can think about is this this is this uh, dynamics of a mixed state, um, and so here the, there's some limiting cases which are simple. So one is if you if your measurement rate is one, then the then the um, you know the state you sort of perfectly project the system at each layer, and the state goes to a random uh, pure product state. Um, so the other limit, which is simple to understand, is when you have a very low measurement rate, so when it's small compared to the sort of scrambling time in the system, and then you can show that an, an input mixed state will stay mixed for, for times exponentially long in L. And the, the, the simplest way to give this argument is using a quantum error correction idea. So you, you imagine you, you have a, you know, an input density matrix. This is, a, this is sort of, uh, these are sort of in, encoding some code words in the system that gets scrambled into a non-local code space and then local measurements. So if you're making measurements very infrequently, just a few measurements, uh, they, you know, they won't collapse that state. And then in the next round of unitaries that the quantum information is sort of re-encoded by the dynamics. Um, and so that, so then, then you can see that the only way to, to sort of collapse quantum information about the system is if it, if it, if it sort of localizes to a single site um, and then you, and then that, that in general, that would be an exponentially rare event. Okay, so here, here's some numerical data showing, you know, this effect in, in this model we call a random Clifford model. So here each, each unitary in the circuit is a random Clifford gate. So this lets us do good numerics so we can, we can study big systems and get you know, confidence in the results. Um, so what I'm showing here is we, we take the initial state, which is, which is a identity matrix, and we look at the, the entropy of that state at, at late times, you know, after many rounds of measurements and, and, and unitary dynamics. And then you see these, these, two, these two phases. So there's this pure phase where the entropy density of the state goes to zero at late times. And then there's this mixed phase where it, it stays, um, stays finite for, for a long time. Um, and so the idea here is that this, in this phase, information is being stored and protected from, uh, from the measurements. Okay, so the, 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 the sort of main perspective I, I wanna present now is, um, is, is sort of a, is a more explicit uh, connection to, uh, to this quantum error correction and coding in the problem. And uh, we're gonna sort of thinking in, in terms of, um, in terms of optimal coding for the system. And so this, this goes back to ideas from uh, Sh Shannon on just basics of information theory. So if you, if you have um, an error correction, so if you have a noisy channel and you wanna sort of send information through that channel, then you know, by, by encoding information in an error correcting code, that, that can be done with, with you know, su perfect success. And the way we think about this problem is this sort of three, three steps. So there's an encoding step uh, where information is encoded, there's a noisy channel, and then there's a decoding step um, where some measurements are performed and you know, information is restored. So th this, this kind of classical idea was extended to the quantum case you know, in, the, in the 90s, this sort of foundational work in quantum information. Um, and then the, the sort of central, central quantity that comes out of this theory is this notion of a channel capacity. So if you have an error model and there's, this is some error rate, and then this is a code rate. So this is the density of information you want to store in the system. And for every code rate, there's sort of a, a maximum, there's sort of a maximum um, error which you can tolerate through, through encoding. And uh, in particular, there's, there's actually a phase transition for this. So this is, here we're thinking about the optimal encoding and decoding pair. Um, so there's a, there's a phase transition for this, this pair, uh, which, you know, below threshold, it, the, there's a the, the failure probability goes to zero and then it, it goes through some critical region and then above threshold that it, it goes to one. And um, typically this, this transition is rather abrupt. So you go from a finite rate of information to a zero rate of information. So we, we think of this as kind of a first order phase transition. 
this is a very abrupt phase transition. But interestingly, if you, if you go down to, to zero code rate, um, you get something more akin to a, to a second order transition. So it's a much weaker change in the, um, in the dynamics of the, of the system. And, um, and so, so what, you know, one of the observations we made is that, is that this, you know, this picture of the channel capacity is actually, uh, you know, is very similar to, to, to what we found for this purification transition. Um, so you, you, as you're changing this measurement rate, which we think of as an error rate, there's this critical, critical measurement rate where the, where the, you know, the amount of information sustained in the system, it stays finite. I mean, this is, and this, this transition is well understood to be a sec, sort of second order phase transition. Okay, so, so to, to, uh, to, to sort of, Quantify our this this idea. We 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 were able to, uh, to 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 prove some kind of optimal encoding theorem for this problem, and so it, sort of informal statement of the, of the theorem is is here. So we're going to think of you know this is a quantum channel uh, with a with what we call a purification transition, um, and then this the statement of of our of our theorem, which you know the proof is is relatively uh, simple, is that the the, the density matrices um, obtained from, from evolving maximally mixed state for this unitary measurement dynamics, we actually define sort of optimal in the sense of capacity achieving quantum error correcting codes for the future evolution of the, of the system. Um, and so the, the picture is, is shown here. So you, you think of you have this input density matrix, this could be any quantum state, it could be a pure state for instance. Um, and then the, there's an initial process where the, that, that pure state gets encoded in, a, in an irreversible way. So this is non-unitary dynamics. So it gets, in, it gets encoded in a state, sort of random encoding. But then what's interesting is that the future evolution of the system acts like unitary dynamics. So it just rotates this, this, um, <clears throat> you know, this, this state in a unitary way. So it's sort of reversible dynamics. So the, the effective dimension of this code space is, is given by the entropy density of this, of this particular state. So this is the capacity. Um, <clears throat> the code space, the sort of dimension of the code space goes to one or the, the code vanishes at the critical point. And then below, below, the, below this critical measurement rate, the, the, the statement of this, this theorem is that the dynamics of the system is, is optimally encoding quantum information. Uh, Okay, so 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 to gain to gain more insight into this process, so, so now we have shown that this dynamics of the mixed state is this is this encoding process. So now I want to say a little bit more about what the dynamics actually uh, looks like in this problem. So let's imagine we start in a so first let's go well below capacity where it's simpler. So let's start in a mixed state and then look at the uh, look at an initial initial state which is well below maximal entropy density, so well below capacity. Then you know above the above the critical measurement rate, there is an exponential this exponential decay of the entropy, so it quickly saturates to zero. Um, as you go through the critical point, there's a you know there's some power law decay, uh, which is characteristic of a, a critical phenomenon, um, and then. You know what's what's interesting is you is you go you go past the measurement rate and what happens is that you you again you get stuck in this late time uh, density and this this density now you know is really should be interpreted as this density of logical qubits in the system. So th this this is the behavior below capacity, which which I think is is rather intuitive, um, you know, given what we understand about the transition. So the actually what what's interesting is that you. you is actually the dynamics, you know, right at capacity. So this optimal code dynamics is 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 a bit richer than the sort of below capacity limit, and I'm illustrating that here in this plot. So it, it has it has an additional uh, regime essentially. So so there's an initial process where you where you form a good code, and that that actually takes time, which is extensive in the system, um, and then there's this plateau region. Where you know where the, where the entropy sits for a long time uh, before 
you know, bef before crossing over and eventually purifying on, on exponentially long times. So this plateau value, it's this, this maximal density of logical qubits, which you can encode in the system on these polynomial time scales. And, and it's interesting that there are these two, these sort of two regimes in the dynamics of this sort of early time and late time. And um, in particular, what's interesting is that the, the code in the, in the system retains some, some, memory, some memory of the local nature of the model um, for these early times, whereas at, at much later times, exponentially long times, it starts to look more like a, a random unstructured code um, in terms of its performance. So, so what, what the one way to think about this is that this, this polynomial in L time scale, this, this transition is it's analogous to the breakdown of eigenstate thermalization as you go to larger energy windows in, in the system. So that's, that's sort of an intuitive picture for this. Okay, so now I, I wanna just show, show you some results on what the, so I talked about the time dynamics of, the, of this, this code. Now I wanna talk about the spatial structures of this, of this code space density matrix. Um, so those results are, are shown, shown here. So the, the main point to take away here is that if we look below, so we look in the mixed, and we look in the mixed phase, then the, um, then the, what you see instead of a volume loss scaling of, so here I'm plotting mutual information between two subregions, instead of a volume loss scaling, you actually see a sort of sub-extensive um, background scaling. It it's, looks like it's neither log nor uh, some kind of possibly power loss. And this is more technical comments. Another interesting point is that the, the code distance um, for these codes is actually sub-extensive. So, so they're quite far from, from random codes in that respect. Okay, so how much time do I have? Uh, five minutes, yes. Maybe six minutes, actually, yeah. Okay, so, um, right. So now I, I wanna talk about, sort of change gears a little bit and talk about a, a sort of way to probe this and uh, probe this physics in in, uh, in experiments and what 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 we the approach we take here is we we use um, instead of looking at the dynamics of this extensive system we, we use sort of a single reference qubit and that acts as a kind of, of order parameter for for the, the transition um, and so you you can think of you can think of this this setup where you have a system entangled with a reference, and then uh, we're looking at the late time entanglement entropy of this reference system. Um, that's actually related to something called entanglement fidelity, which is a common fidelity metric and that, that, that we use in quantum formation. Um, so so oftentimes it's if you want to characterize how coherent a quantum process is, it's actually convenient to, to add a, a reference system and study how it preserves entanglement with the reference. Um, and so what the behavior of this, this sort of order parameter uh, is, is shown here. So, so about, you know, so there's this critical, there's this is this is a 1D random Clifford model um, I'm showing. And so, you know, but, uh, Below, above the critical point, the, the order parameter decays to zero, and then, then below the critical point, it sort of decays, it, it goes up to one or in the long time limit. Um, and so what this implies is that the, this, again, so that this dynamics is reversible in some sense below the critical point. So, so if, you take, if you take any, you know, these two states which are entangled with the reference, then they can be, they can be reversed. Um, you can evolve to late times and actually evolve evolve superpositions back to early times, um, and so um, and having this this order parameter is a signature that uh, that, that that's possible. So in, your entanglement fidelity under optimal decoding is converging to one, whereas it's converging to zero above the transition. And um, Nice thing about this this sort of local order parameter is if this reference qubit starts locally entangled with the system, then um, then you actually retain that locality structure. So if you look at the the later time dynamics, the measurement sort of you think of measurements as events. The measurement events that can purify or reduce the entanglement of that reference qubit um, actually form a kind of light cone in the system. So here I'm plotting the, the change in the entropy of the reference system 
um, as a function of the measurement location which is averaged over over surface. And so you can see that there's there's some kind of emergent emergent light cone in the system, even even though we have um, you know measurements in the system which which can violate uh, locality. And, and there's some discussion of violations of this locality picture in, in this recent work. Um, but at least for this for this particular object, you know, we see signs of of, of, of locality. Okay, so um, so the nice thing about this, you know, this probe is that we can get direct we can get direct access to this this mixed phase with a constant depth circuits and then polynomial mini runs of the experiment. So you you don't you you can run out to finite time and then only record measurements over finite spatial region and you can you can see the transition. So that's a nice proof of principle um, result that we could study this in the experiment. Okay, so now I just want to, in the last few minutes, I'll just say a few words about um, so this project I mentioned, you know, trying, trying to see some signatures of this transition in ion trap systems. Uh, so, so here, this is a picture of, a, of the type of system we're, we're thinking about. Uh, so you have a, a one-dimensional chain of uh, euterbium ions. And um, the nice thing about this, these systems is that gate, you know, in addition to the high fidelities that are possible in, in controls and measurements, you, you can actually implement gates um, between arbitrary pairs of, of qubits in the system. So even though it's one dimensional chain, you can, you can entangle this qubit with, you know, any, any pair you, you like. So it, it doesn't, act, this model in particular doesn't have natural locality, which is sim similar to, to, to Sakar's uh, talk. Okay, so the, the type of model we, we study here, it's, it's actually similar in spirit to the kind of model Six Cigar was uh, discussing. Uh, so we have, a, so here we have a so randomly coupled qubits in an all-to-all -all coupled system. So we take a random graph of n qubits um, and then we connect, you know, we connect certain pairs according to various constraints. And then we, we also have ancillas, which we use for measurements. And then we have this, this reference system um, to sort of probe the entanglement fidelity. And, and then the model is that we, you know, at each time step, we, we apply these, these are Ising gates. So these are entangling Ising gates, which are made into that system. And then we, and after each gate, we make a measurement with some probability. And, um, and then the, the tuning parameter we'll, we'll use is the basis of the measurement. So either we'll measure in the X or the Z basis. And this, this model has, you know, it also has the, the phase transition between a sort of success and failure phase. So, it, so it's, it's a nice candidate model uh, to study. Okay, so now I just wanna show some, some of the, the type of data you get for this system. We, you know, we don't have, Full results on seeing the phase transition or anything like that, but but um, but you know we we can run these circuits and and sort of see the see the see the basic signature. So so here we're studying small systems. So this is um, this is six qubits. I mean, part of the challenge is that some of you know we have to allocate resources for measurements and reference. So we you know we start with a chain of thirteen qubits and then we we're left with six system qubits, um, and we're running fairly deep circuits. So these are these circuits are, are depth, you know, depth eight circuits on the order of the system size. Um, and then this is the type of data you get. So here we're looking at the entropy of the reference system. And, um, and you know, for certain circuits, so we're setting a state, this is a stabilizer circuit model. So this number is either zero or one for a particular circuit. And, um, and then, you know, for some circuits, we see purification events and then other circuits stay mixed. So this is, this is kind of the basic signature of the, this is a kind of basic data set you're, you're, you're looking at. Um, okay, so uh, with that, I'll just say a, a few words about, you know, where we're headed with this research. So I, I think so, some of the goals of this work are to study sort of, you know, more systems and, and sort of map out some of the some of this some of this parameter space. In particular, we, we want to start including more realistic features, sort of uncontrolled environments, and, and maybe putting in you know real error correction into the problem. Um, I think another another common theme is that you know we're finding these models are, are very rich in, in their behavior. So that, so there's 
so this notion of just success and failure is 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 too is too binary in some sense of so there there seem to be multiple phases multiple phase transitions with different levels of, of success and I think, um, I think that's that's sort of characteristic of this problem and uh, you know an another sort of general question is is we we want to understand these phase transitions in, in this problem in particular whether you know, to have a good quantum system, do we really, you know, this is a common question in quantum computing, do you really need to be well below threshold or, or is it okay to sort of work near, near threshold in some sense? Um, and so with, with that, I'll just end, end the talk and, and maybe put up a, an advertisement if you're interested in hearing more about this, you know, even more about this topic. Um, you, we're organizing a virtual conference um, through the Max Planck Institute. Uh, so it's going to be in, in a couple of months. Actually, Cigar is, is speaking, so yeah, so, it's, so it should be fun. So okay, uh, so thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, now we have time for some questions. Uh, okay, so uh, let me ask you a question. So you showed this light cone in the dynamics. Could you explain again what was that plot and what is it? What is it that you're plotting and uh, what does that tell you about this, uh, uh, like dynamics below the threshold? Right. So this is the. Um, Right, so we have this this locally entangled uh, re reference, and then we're you know it, we're looking at how how much does a measurement at this position and time how much does it uh, purify the reference, how much does it reduce its its entanglement, um, and then uh -huh. and so what you see is that you know at some finite time you. The only measurements which can which can actually uh, sort of purify the ref the reference system are are in uh, you know, this bounded bounded region. Yeah. So this is some uh, disorder average, random average, because you have this expectation value. I'm a little bit confused. But, but yeah, so I'm looking at the uh -huh. the. Um, yeah, we look at the the change. This is the change in the change in the entropy of this reference system um, <laughs> due to a measurement at this particular time, averaged over oh, over see. circuits. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, one of the one of the one of the features of this this particular observable is, is that it, it it's not necessarily self averaging. So the um, yeah, so the the average is important actually. So you saw that in the, in the experimental data. That there's, you know, this is not. It's either zero or one. It doesn't. It doesn't have discrete values. So in some sense, we're we're actually probing. Um, depending on your perspective, we're probing the ensemble of of circuits as as well as the you know, the quantum states. Uh huh. I see, thanks. Okay, any other questions or comments for Michael? All right, if not, uh, yeah, uh, let's thank both speakers, Sagar and Michael. And uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, so there will not be a seminar, UQM seminar next week because of the UQM summer school. Uh, but then I guess we'll see you all uh, in two weeks. Thank you. <laughs>